On this week's boiler tip, we're taking a look at our pressure controls on our steam boilers. And one of the first questions that I get is how do you identify which switch is which? Because before we go to adjusting any of these, we obviously want to make sure we know which one we're adjusting. The, the first and easiest to pick out really is either the firing rate control or the high limit because they are distinctly different from the others. Our firing rate control typically has three thin wires going to a potentiometer and wiper, and as such, it's not even technically a switch. It's a proportioning control. So if we take the cover off and look at that, um, we can see it doesn't have a switch mechanism like the other devices. Our high limit is easy to recognize because it's got a manual reset button. And on the new Mercury Freestyles, that's on the front. And on the older Mercury styles, it was frequently on the top. So you may need to get a ladder to verify on a larger boiler um, that particular switch. Now our operating switch and our low fire hold switch can be a little trickier because in many cases it's the same model, style, shape, number, and everything. So what we need to look at if we just walk up to a boiler that's in operation is the setting on them. Um, your operating control, if you look at the dial on it, is typically going to be set above your firing rate control and below your low fire hold, or I'm sorry, your manual reset high limit. Your low fire hold is going to be set lower because it's designed to operate at a far lower pressure to enable the boiler to go to the modulation state. So firing rate, operator, high limit, low fire hold, that's great. So if I were to get a Sharpie and just write on the front of those, I would know exactly which was which. Except it's a common oversight, those covers all come off. So if you remove all those during an inspection to unwire and remove and clean them, etc., cetera, you've, you've lost that valuable bit of information. So if you're going to label these, I recommend putting the label on this plastic side, I'm sorry, the metal side of the switch so that even if we take the cover off in the future, we still have the identifying marks on each device.